Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off with Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or to give it its official acronym, FSR. So FSR is AMD's competitor, of course, to NVIDIA's DLSS. And AMD have actually revealed several key details concerning this upcoming piece of tech in an interview with PC World. I'll, of course, link the video in the description. So yeah, FSR is an interesting one. It's going to launch this year, according to AMD, and we haven't really known too much about it, only that it's going to be uh, platform agnostic, so it can work on the Xbox, the PlayStation, and of course AMD's own GPUs, as well as some of my own leaks as well, which we're going to get into more in just a moment. But first of all, when is it going to release and how's it coming on? Well, according to Scott Herkelman, it's progressing very well internally in our lab, but our commitment to the gaming community, it needs to be open and it needs to work across all things and games developers need to adopt it. Even though it's progressing well, we still have much more work to do, not only internally, but with our game developer partners. We want it to launch this year. We believe we can get it out this year, but we still at the same time have a lot more work ahead of us. We need to make sure that image quality is there. We need to make sure it can scale from different resolutions and at the same time, our developers are happy with what we are producing, end quote. So a couple of things. Um, actually, first of all, I'd also like to give credit to videocards.com for this uh, transcription. So I will also link the article in the video description. But yeah, a couple of things that we noticed. First of all, they believe it can be out this year. And given that wording, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be out tomorrow. I had mentioned several times now in videos that I don't believe it's going to be any time before the first half of this year. So to my understanding, it is not just a toggle that you can enable in the GPU's you know, control panel. For example, like forcing uh, better anti-aliasing or trying to enable uh, anisotropic filtering or something like that. Instead, this needs to be coded and added into the game engine. And yeah, I'm not saying it's necessarily the hardest thing in the world, but it still does require developers to put time and effort into it, which by the by, makes me wonder how this is gonna be implemented in comparison to say NVIDIA's DLSS, which is now being implemented into just about everything. Obviously we've seen quite a few updates recently with Unreal Engine as well. So I wonder if it's gonna be a case of really big developers, the Ubisofts, the Electronic Arts, possibly have both implementations or maybe it will be AMD, you know, titles are going to have FSR and NVIDIA titles, DLSS. I kind of don't like the idea uh, because then it becomes, you know, kind of a have or have not situation depending on the GPU vendor that you, you know, you own. But yeah, that's, well, unfortunately the way things might go. Scott also adds that FSR is indeed the name. It's probably the biggest software initiative we have internally because of how important it is. When you turn on ray tracing, you don't want to have a competitive hit or your GPU gets so hit, uh, hit so hard. FSR, and that is the acronym, is something key for us to launch this year, but we need a bit more time. We are progressing well, but we still have more work to do. And to my understanding anyway, FSR does seem pretty performant. I recently leaked that I'm hearing up to two times increase in frame rate. Unfortunately, what I don't know is the conditions of that higher performance. For example, is that 1080p to 4K with crappy uh, quality? Or is that 1080p to 4K with amazing quality or 1440p to 4K with amazing quality? I honestly don't know. And I do agree with Scott. You know, when you enable hardware-based ray tracing on RDNA or even NVIDIA, especially at higher resolutions, frame rate does take a hit. And yeah, it's just, it is what it is. On RDNA 2, I recently did cover that uh, the GPU, if it's, uh, you know, optimized, ray tracing performance does seem to be a little better. But obviously, at the end of the day, ray tracing on RDNA 2 is just not as fast as NVIDIA's Ampere. And I do think uh, programming tricks and familiarity of the architecture will help some. Again, I did cover recently that we're seeing like a 20-25% improvement, uh, depending on optimization of, for example, how the GPU has wave fronts running over it and other such things. But yeah, uh, I'll try to remember to link that video in the description. I'll go way more into detail than that. But what I do think is that 
uh, upsampling tech is going to be of critical importance, not just for you know the bleeding edge GPUs, but also mid-range as well. In fact, arguably, cards such as the RTX 3060 Ti or the RX 6700 uh, and 6700 XT, they're probably going to be even more um, needing this technology because you could then run games at uh, 1440p with ultra high frame rates and I think that's really cool for end users. So that has also been the question of how this tech actually functions in comparison to DLSS. Uh, DLSS obviously uses training and inference. We don't do any of the training. That's obviously taken care of for us by games developers slash NVIDIA, where they use high resolution reference images to then see how um, you can upsample from lower resolution, for example, 1080p. And DLSS has certainly not been perfect from the get-go, like DLSS 1 definitely had some ropey implementations, like Battlefield 1 was okay, Control initially was okay, but there was certainly a lot of blurriness, finer details, for example, hair looked not great, honestly. However, things now are starting to get better. It's still not perfect. There are still some things, for example, finer details on text and hair, especially at longer, uh, longer distances. It's not, you know, perfect still, but it is coming on a lot better. And I think that this is going to continue to evolve over the next couple of years. But how is it working on AMD's hardware? Well, again, Scott, fortunately, has us covered. You don't need machine learning to do it. You can do it many different ways, and we're evaluating many different ways. What matters most to us is what games developers want to use, because at the end of the day, it's not just for us. We don't want to force people to do it. It is not a good outcome. We would rather say a, a gaming community, which of these techniques would you rather see us implement so it can be immediately spread across the industry and hopefully cross-platform? Boy, there's a lot to unpack there. The first is that, well, it seems that they also want this to be cross-platform. We have known that they have wanted this to work with the PlayStation, the Xbox, as well as desktop RDNA class cards. And I think that's really good. I would also be curious to see whether it would run on uh, NVIDIA GPUs as well and how that would actually work if it does. But this also means that, yeah, our theories were right. It's not using training and inference. Unfortunately, it still seems that they're trying to get the exact methodology sorted out. And yeah, to my understanding, this is in alpha. So alpha, of course, is, well... Yeah, it's not exactly final hardware, sorry, software. And I believe that it is in alpha. It's in the hands of developers. They're testing it out, and early results do seem promising. But to my understanding, and I stress this could be wrong, to my understanding, it uses basically an evolution of AMD's older technology under Fidelity FX. And, but obviously, it is a stress and evolution. It's much improved. And then it uses a small amount of uh, lower of uh, compute to then uh, basically upsample and improve the frame. That is not the same thing, of course, traditionally anyway, as uh, like machine learning, if you compare it to, say, DLSS. What it seems that Scott is telling us here is they're not going the NVIDIA route and they want to make it uh, more open source and easier for developers to implement. But yeah, it does still require developers to get under the hood and to actually code this in. And as I more recently went into, you know, AMD, uh, NVIDIA, of course, as well as Microsoft are all pushing their own tech with direct ML being for uh, Xbox and uh, Windows-based PCs. Obviously, NVIDIA have DLSS, which seems very likely now to be coming to the Switch as well. I've heard actually from yet another source that at the very least, Nintendo were discussing things with NVIDIA for DLSS. That's not a confirmation it will be in the Switch Pro or Super Switch or whatever the hell it's going to be called. But at this point, I do feel it's very likely that it will be, given I'm hearing from several other sources that the Switch does have a later version of the SOC, which does obviously have uh, tensor cores. So... Yeah, all of these different companies are pushing their own tech, and obviously each of them have their own, you know, methods of of doing this. And I think that it's going to be very cool to see what NVIDIA do uh, end up facing from AMD. That was a nice save there. Couldn't you tell that I said uh, NVIDIA and I meant to say AMD? But yeah, I, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out over the next couple of couple of months. Um, 
because at the end of the day, I've not seen images of how this looks. I'm told it is pretty nice looking. It does look pretty good. And you also have to remember that if you're running a game and you're trying to look at image quality, like with either static screenshots or you're slowing it down to like 10% speed and zooming in 400%, then you're probably going to see the differences between AMD and Nvidia's solution. I don't know which one looks better, but let's just say, let's just say Nvidia's does look better. However, if AMD's solution is really performant, it runs absolutely brilliantly, it still looks pretty damn good, I have no problem with that. I think that's absolutely fine. And I, I believe that the only the only negative about it is it's not been ready yet. And I really think it's a shame that it was not it was not available for um, the launch of the RX 6700 XT. I think that would have been perfect. Or even better, you know, the, the higher end Navi cards like the 6800 XT. It is what it is though. We can only wait and see how all of this comes out. And I'm very much looking forward to actually getting my hands on this tech. Um, yeah, it'll be also curious how it's implemented for developers because I don't think um, first party Microsoft titles, for example, will use this tech. They'll probably gonna just use direct ML. I think it's going to be more likely that this tech evolves when you have a game from let's say Electronic Arts and they are just implementing this tech for the Xbox, the PC, and of course the PlayStation 5. And I would also be curious, although I don't know if it's ever gonna become publicly available, how easy it is to just kind of do a one and done solution for all of the different platforms. There's a lot of questions and I personally am just curious to know what the answers are. And while we're talking about GPUs, I also wanna throw in something regarding the RTX 3080 Ti. And yeah, the release date for the RTX 3080 Ti has like changed about two trillion times at this point. And I just want to give a quick update to you guys. So the RTX 3080 Ti I had said is going to launch in mid April. And it seems like it's a slight delay. It seems it's going to be delayed by about a week. However, the uh, announcement is still going to be taking place in April. It seems like it's gonna be mid-April. And then we should see the GPUs on store shelves basically by the last uh, week of April. And these cards, of course, are going to be very impressive. We've already discussed the specs quite a number of times at this point. I actually suspect in terms of performance, it's going to be pretty much indistinguishable for, uh, sorry, against the RTX 3090. Like if you were to just look at the results or to uh, play on one system and then the other, you're gonna be like, I don't actually know which one's which. In fact, possibly the RTX 3080 Ti might even be faster in certain cases, particularly with AIB models, which are really pushing the clocks. As of the time I'm recording this, I don't know what the final clock frequencies are of this GPU. And obviously availability is going to be an entirely different question. Um, I suspect that they're going to sell out ultra quickly because, well, everyone wants an RTX 3080 Ti. To my understanding too, it's still going to have the mining nerf uh, on the card. So it'll be curious to see if NVIDIA improve the uh, anti-mining measures on the RTX 3080 Ti after their recent oopsie with the RTX 3070. The one good thing, of course, of the 3070 uh, mining uh, driver incident was that it seems to only, from the you know NVIDIA's own blunder, it only seems to be a single card that uh, you can run with that driver. So hopefully, we don't see similar for the RTX 3080 Ti, but as always, we can only wait for official confirmation. And the final thing I want to discuss today is Auto HDR. No, I've not had amnesia and forgot to uh, talk about an Xbox Series X piece of news for this long. Instead, this is actually for an inside build of Windows 10. And of course, this will make its way to regular retail as well. And Auto HDR allows DirectX 11 titles, for example, to, well, have HDR when they were only intended ever and offered in SDR. It's a pretty cool piece of technology, assuming you've got a good HDR monitor to actually take advantage of this. I'll leave links in the video description for Microsoft's blog. And yeah, I'll be very curious to see how this actually evolves. At the moment, it is still quite early. And honestly, Windows HDR has not had the best implementation. It is getting better. Although to be fair, it's not just Microsoft's fault, of course. It 
has somewhat been down to drivers as well, although I do think support all around is getting better. I'm curious actually if you do have a HDR monitor, what's your experiences here, especially back in the day going from full screen to like windowed mode if you happen to press like the Windows key to, I don't know, go on a web browser or something like that. It could have been interesting on some games, very interesting. I'm looking at you as an Evil 7 with a judging eye. Uh, but yeah, so I think this is really cool. Um, and personally speaking, I think HDR in games, assuming you've got the display for it, if you've got, you know, a display which it says it's HDR, but if you put it in HDR, you're, you, you, you're just gonna be a sad panda. But if you do have a good display for HDR, I do think it's quite transformative for games. Um, so I do think Auto HDR is pretty cool. I'll be curious too to see what the performance hit is like and also to do some comparison images against the Xbox series. Maybe I'll get around to doing that, I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, I think that it looks really cool what Microsoft are doing here, so that's, that's fantastic. But I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, of course, and also click the like button because it is YouTube land. Also, let me know down below, would you be interested in auto HDR? Have you like uh, had any good experiences so far with the Xbox implementation of it? And uh, yeah, with that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.